بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم صلى الله عليك يا سيدي ومولاي يا رسول الله صلى الله عليك يا مولاي يا أبا عبد الله غريب يا مظلوم كربلاء لعن الله الظالمين لكم من الأولين والآخرين ما خاب من تمسك بكم وأمن من لجأ إليكم يا ليتنا كنا معكم سيدي فنفوز فوزا عظيما قال الإمام الحسين صلوات الله وسلامه عليه في بعض كلامه وخطبه أريد أن أمر بالمعروف وأنهى عن المنكر وأسير بسيرة جدي رسول الله وأبي علي صل على محمد وآل محمد One of the main reasons for Imam Hussein alayhi salam to take a stand is mentioned here that I want to enjoin good and forbid wrong things. Amr bil ma'roof and nahi anil munkar. There are levels of Amr bil ma'roof and nahi anil munkar. One level is the reform of the problems or the sins among the Muslim ummah, and that is by way of talking to people, preaching them, they may accept and then we have fulfilled our duty. Sometimes we cannot talk to them and only we have to by heart to hate the wrong thing they are doing so at least we are protected from being affected by the wrong thing they are doing. And sometimes you can use force. Then here we have to use force in order to correct the problems which are happening. I mean, if you see somebody want to kill another one who is innocent, you may preach him, you may teach him, you may advise him, but if you see he insists and you can by force catch him or tie his hands, then you have to stop him by force. If you cannot, you are afraid that he will kill you as well, then at least by heart you deny what he is doing so that, so that you will not be affected by that action, because sometimes the human being, when he sees something, he like it and he think it is normal. And it is important to make the human being, the Muslims, as immune against all types of sins. But in a hadith, when Amr bil Ma'roof comes, sometimes it is referred to jihad, actually, not the Amr bil Ma'roof, which is mentioned in books of fiqh. Jihad is one of the ways of Amr bil Ma'roof, is to take a stand in order to reform the situation of the Muslim Ummah. And that is, though physically one may lose, but ultimately the change is going to happen. Let us say there is a moral victory, or spiritual victory, or religious victory, though physical victory is not there. And that is what Imam Hussein Salamullahi Ali achieved by his stand in Karbala against Yazid and his government. You see, Yazid tried to remove anything related to Islam and make it as a kingdom. Like before him, his father Muawiyah, we mentioned yesterday some of the wrong things that Muawiyah has done. And Imam Hussein wrote a letter to Muawiyah. He mentioned that to him one by one, that you have, you did not honor the covenant between you and my son, Imam Hassan, and you let Ziyad ibn Abi to be uh, Ziyad ibn Abi Sufyan and made him legitimate while he is illegitimate son. 
and you have killed the people, the innocent people, like Hajar ibn Adi and Amr ibn al-Hamaq al-Khuzai, and so on. He mentioned all that to him. So that was one of the problems which prevailed in that area in the Muslim Ummah. At the time of Yazid, Yazid was much worse than Muawiyah because Muawiyah, at least, he used to advise Yazid. He said, don't be mischievous in front of people in the daytime. If you want to do any t sort of mischief or drinking or um, uh, having parties for um, uh, selfish desires, don't do it in the daytime that the people know about it. Do it at night, and night will bury all your sins. Nobody knows about it. That was some of the advices of Muawiyah to his son Yazid. But Yazid was so much open that the Muslims, all of them, did not believe a day will come that he will be the ruler for them. But anyhow, that is the chance of the history. And Muawiyah forced the people to pledge allegiance to Yazid and threatened them and killed some of them. Some of them were killed by poison, like Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Bakr. He's son of Abu Bakr. And he was ruler or governor in Hama. Muawiyah asked that if I die, who deserves to be the ruler? So some said Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Bakr, he's son of Abu Bakr, he's a good man, he is a ruler. And he deserves to be the caliph. So Muawiyah sent the poison for him in honey and killed him with the poison. And so on, many people were assassinated in that way. And then he declared that Yazid is his vice crown or crown prince, that if he Muawiyah dies, then Yazid is the ruler. When Imam Hussein here, and the ruler of Medina, Al-Walid ibn Utba, asked Imam Hussein at night that Muawiyah died and now Yazid is the caliph and you have to pledge allegiance. Imam said, well, I don't think you will accept my pledge of allegiance secretly. Tomorrow when you call the people, you call us with them and we will see. And then in that night, Imam Hussein moved toward Mecca in order to save himself because if he would have remained in Medina, he would have been killed in Medina. And that killing naturally will not have its effect to reform the situation and tell the people how cruel are Banu Umayyah. See, it was not important for Imam Hussein to be killed. He could have stayed in Medina and they used to kill him. But that killing should shake the Muslim Ummah and expose the tyranny of Bani Umayyah. The people should understand it in that way. That is why in Karbala, not only ordinary killing, there was a tragedy happened. Imam Hussein could have saved the small child of six months age without bringing him to the enemy. He knew the enemy will not give him water. But he wanted to tell how cruel are these people who have no mercy at their heart, even for a child of a newborn child of age three or six months age. So that is the aim, you know, to show their tyranny and oppression very clear to the people. So Imam Hussein came to Mecca and he stayed from Rajab till beginning of the Hajjah, about six months Imam Hussein was in Mecca. Then he got the news that Yazid has sent people with swords and told them that kill Imam Hussein, even if he is catching the cover of Kaaba. Hatta wa in kana mutaallikan baastar al Kaaba. I mean, even if he is near Kaaba, you don't respect Kaaba, don't respect Masjid al Haram, don't respect Haram, which is a peaceful area, you kill him there. You know. So Imam Hussein, alayhi salam, before performing a'mal of Hajj on the eighth or ninth day, he left Mecca and well, people used to go to Mina, then to Arafat. Instead of going to Mina and Arafat, Imam Hussein left toward Iraq. Naturally, that created a movement among the people that why Imam Hussein is not completing his Hajj. And people asked him, well, many people asked him, and his reply said, 
I don't want the sacred place to be insulted by uh, my killing and bloodshed which will happen. Some of them, they ask him, don't you know that the people of Iraq have not supported your father, and ultimately he was killed, and they have not supported your brother, so why you are going? They will not support you. Imam said, yes, I know, but I have a decision that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted me to go there. Ibn Abbas asked him, and Imam said, well, I have an order from the Prophet that I should go. Even if I am killed, I, am, I have to go. He said, well, if you are going, then why you are taking these ladies with you? If you know you are going to be killed, then why do you take the ladies and the children with you? He said, Sha'allahu ayyarahunna sabi sabaya. About himself, he said, Sha'allahu ayyarani qatilan. Allah wanted to see me martyred, and he said, Allah wanted to see them as captives because they will carry the message of what happened in Karbala to the people in the Muslim area, Muslim Ummah, and the people will know about the tragedy of Karbala, should not be covered by the propaganda of the government at that time. And then with Imam Hussein, it looks not many have come out, though he called the people to support him in that six months in Mecca, about 300 people were with him. And when he reached an area near Zarud, he asked for Azdaq there, the well-known poet, what do you see about the people of Kufa? He said, their hearts are with you, they love you, respect you, but their swords are against you, means physically they are with your enemies and they will attack you, though they love you, but they are in the side of the enemies. You see, that is the hypocrisy. People who believe in truth, they know Ahlul Bayt's position, how great, but still they don't care and they go with the side of the enemy and kill the grandson of the Holy Prophet. You see how cruel were the people who used to kill, to talk, to call themselves as Muslim or some of them, they might say that we love Ahlul Bayt. What type of love? Is that expression of love of Ahlul Bayt? And also he got the news that his cousin Muslim Ibn Aqil was martyred in Kufa. Muslim Ibn Aqil was sent earlier by Imam Hussein to see the people of Kufa and to get allegiance from them, pledge allegiance from them. So Muslim Ibn Aqil has gone and 30,000 people did bay'at with him for Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And naturally at that time, 18,000 letter, each letter one person or two or three signed it that Aqdam ilayna ibn Rasulullah, come to us, we'll support you. The environment is ready for you, the land is ripe, and if you come, then you'll see that everything is under your control, and so on. Uh, with those wishes and hopes, they wrote to Imam Hussein, that is why Imam Hussein came toward Karbala. And in the way, though he got the news that Muslim Ibn Aqil was martyred, and Ubaidullah bin Ziyad is the ruler of Kufa, but still he continued his way. Because some people say that Imam Hussein did not know that he is going to be killed there. Actually, this is uh, very uh, incorrect uh, saying, you know. Uh, Imam Hussein knows very well that he is going to be killed in Karbala, uh, first of all, by saying of the Holy Prophet, which he knows about it, because in the hadith, when Imam Hussein was a child, Umm Salama narrated the hadith, and similar to it, Imam Ali salam narrated, Imam Ali said that, one day I came and I found the Holy Prophet crying. I asked him, Ya Rasulullah, why you are crying? He said, just now, the angel Gabriel has come and told me that my son is going to be killed 
in a land called Karbala. And then he asked me, do you want to uh, see the shape of the land? I said, yes. Then he got, he grabbed uh, some of the clay of, of that land of Karbala, and he gave it to me. And he showed it, that one to Imam Ali, alayhi salam. In another hadith, Umm Salama, Umm al-Mu'mineen, wife of the Prophet, she said that the Prophet gave me that clay, and he said, keep it with you. The day it will turn into uh, blood will be red, then you know that day is the day of martyrdom of my son Hussein. So Musalama used to keep that in a bottle and looking to it every day when Imam Hussein moved till the day of Ashura when Umm Salama saw the clay has turned to blood and then she realized that Imam Hussein was killed. And then that story was said to Imam Hussein by his father, his mother, and ultimately he knew that the people of Iraq will not support because he lived in Iraq at the time of his father, Imam Ali, from the year 35 to 40. And then he knew what they did to his brother, Imam Hussein. They did not support him. And he knew that the government for 20 years, from the year 41 till 60, it was in hand of Bani Umayyah, and naturally the people, the head of the tribes are supporting the government, not supporting the truth. Though they know the truth is with Ahl al-Bayt, but they support the government. The people like the government, the power, so they yield and surrender to the power, not to the truth. And that is what Imam Hussein wanted to change. Tell the people that you are believers, and you have to perform Amr bil ma'roof and nay al munkar. If you see a zulm is there, injustice is there, Islam is being ruined, changed, how can you continue accepting that without any change? So that was very important to tell the message to the people and let the conscience of the people, which was dead by that time, to revive and be alive again. So the people have their feeling toward Islam that they should support Islam by any way, by heart, by tongue, and by force if possible. So Imam Hussein, alayhi salam, not only from the news of his father or his grandfather, he knew that he is going to be killed in Karbala, but also other people have that knowledge that you are going to a place where rulers of your enemies are governing that area and uh, people will not support you. So if others know about it, how come Imam Hussein himself do not know about it? Naturally, Imam knows that. That is why he said to many of them, Allahu ayyarani qatilan. Allah wanted to see me as a martyr. So that was a clear message that I know I am going to be killed, but that killing is the only thing which will awake the sleeping people and let them realize the tragedy of Islam that the, the caliphate, the caliph or the imam who was supposed to be imam appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to implement justice on earth and to implement Islam on earth, all that has been usurped and a fake ruler and zalim imam who lead to hellfire rather than to paradise is ruling and is ruining Islamic rules and regulations one by one. That is why you see nothing of real Islam remain. Killing of a person in Islam is so great that, as the Holy Quran said, if you kill one, as if you have killed all humanity. So that is so, so great for one person. And you see Ziyad ibn Abi killed thousands of people who were innocent and nobody cares about that. So you see, the terrorism, which is used nowadays as a term, started by Bani Umayyah on a large scale just to control the situation of the um, Ummah, even unjustly, whether people like it or not. Even some of the um, wrong things which used to be done by Ziyad ibn Abi is to blind the people, you know, they put a, a, a nail in the eyes of the people and get them blind 
brutally in order to punish them so that others will fear to uh, love Ahlul Bayt or to be with Ahlul Bayt. So, you know, in such type of punishments used to be done and the people were quiet, they do not care, or they were afraid, and they lost any sort of freedom to think about changing the terrible situation. So how come Imam Hussein, the grandson of the Prophet, realize all that, and he know the people are sleeping, he keep quiet without awakening them. And that was the message that the people should know this situation is not an Islamic situation. Though he called himself as caliph, but he is not a real caliph. He's just a ruler, he's just a king, like other kings. So there is no Islamic justice here to blame Islam for that. Actually, Muawiyah used to say that I am not satisfied unless the name of the Prophet in Adhan be removed. Because he said the first one means Abu Bakr. He ruled, and when he died, nothing of his name remained except people say there was Abu Bakr. Same thing, Omar came, and also when he ruled and died, then nothing of his name remained except some people say Omar. But then he say about the Prophet, Fuhad ibn Abi Kabsha, ibn Abi Kabsha, name of someone in Medina, so he, he uh, give that name to the Prophet, is, his name is called five times in Adhan every day. La wallah illa dafna dafna. He swear by Allah that I should bury the name of the Prophet so that nobody will remember that. So in that way, you know, that situation was prevailing and the people do not care. When there were tens of thousands of hadith, rather hundreds of thousands of hadith, all fake and false hadith were there, still the people will not say anything or uh, defend Islam about that new phenomena, people lying on the Prophet and say the Prophet said while the Prophet did not say. So that it was the problem and Imam Hussein has to awake the people who were sleeping. So he took a stand in that way and he announced his aim and object in Mecca and for five months continued to preach the people, tell the people about uh, this message and the people were aware of that. When he left also, the people were aware that the grandson of the Prophet is leaving toward Karbala and in that case the people were always asking what is going to happen. So when Imam Hussein came to Karbala, he was prepared for that. The media in the Muslim world all is following the news that what is going to happen. In the way, Zuhair ibn al-Qain, his views were, he was kind of Uthmanian, a man was with Uthman. He thought that Uthman was innocent and he was killed unjustly. And he had something in heart against Imam Hussein and Imam Ali السلام, He did not know the truth that Imam Ali is not to be blamed and that was the excuse of Muawiyah. He blamed Imam Ali about killing of Uthman while Imam Ali had nothing to do with that. So he did not know and by chance in the road, in those resting areas in the road, well there are only known resting areas, he used to be with Imam Hussein so he used to put his tent in the other side not with the side of tents of Imam Hussein. Imam Hussein sent him a message that please come, I want to talk to you. When, when the letter came and he said, Subhanallah, I left uh, the area so that I will not see Imam Hussein because I don't want, I hate to talk to him. So how can I go and see him? His wife told him that Zuhair, it is shame that the grandson of the Prophet is calling you and you do not care to go with him. Go and hear what he is saying. Then he came and visited Imam Hussein in the tent. Imam Hussein explained to him the truth of what happened and that what he thinks is um, to be blamed is not right. Neither Imam Hussein or Imam Hassan to be blamed, nor their father Imam Ali to be blamed. Then Uthman had his own deeds and acts, and then the Muslims 
decided to kill him in that way, but Imam Ali was not the one who encouraged the Muslim to do. His Muawiyah tried to take that as an ex excuse, and then uh, he fought with Imam Ali and put that in use in mind of the people. So it is just a wrong propaganda. And then Zuhair ibn al-Qayn also joined Imam Hussein. We see the Ashab of Imam Hussein were not uh, from one category of the society. There were the elderly people, the young people, the children, there, even the newborn babies. Some of them were white, some of them were black, some of them were free, some of them were slaves. Some women also supported um, Imam Hussein. Some were so old that their eyelids were down and they have to tie the eyelid in order to be able to see, you know, he's at, at age of maybe 100, 110 years, and so on, you know. So from all categories of the society, they were uh, supporting Imam Hussein alayhi salam, and with that, he came to Karbala. And there Imam Hussein preached the people in Karbala in very long sermons, but then in the night of Ashura, he said that Imam Hussein told them, I don't see any companions better than my companions, and there is no Ahli Bayt, no household more honest and sincere and supportive to me like my household. So actually that is a great um, praise of Imam Hussein to his companions because they were the most sincere and honest companions in the history. None of them left Imam Hussein, though they knew Imam Hussein is going to be killed. In the night of Ashura, Imam Hussein told them, all of you will be killed if you stay with me. And I am allowing you to go. If you go, it's not haram. You go and be far away so that you will not hear my call. If you hear my call, you have to come and support me. But if you are far away, you will not hear my call and there is no harm on you. So he asked them, why the people want to kill me? So why you are coming to support me? They said, no. We will not like the life without you. We have to stay and we have to support you. So that, you see how they were sincere and honest, uh, and they really loved Imam Hussein and loved the cause of Islam in that shape uh, without leaving Imam Hussein alone. One of them, really, he tolerated so much that is unusual for any human being to tolerate. In the day of Ashura, when the time of a prayer was there, midday prayer, and Imam Hussein stopped to pray, was standing to pray, then he stood in front of Imam Hussein to protect him from the arrows of the enemy. And the enemies were not respecting the prayer of Imam Hussein. You know, they used to call themselves as Muslim, and somebody is offering a prayer. At least they could have wait for a while till he finished the prayer, and then they fight. But they want to harm Imam Hussein at time of the prayer. So they used to send the arrows to Imam Hussein. He himself, with his body, he protected Imam Hussein. The arrow may come to his hand, or to his face, or to his body, without moving away, so that the arrow should not miss him and hit Imam Hussein. But that was so much patience and so much tolerance, unbelievable, and then, when Imam Hussein, Hussein finished his prayer, he could not stay and he fell down nearly to die. And he asked Imam Hussein, our faith to Ibn Rasulullah, did I fulfill my promise? Even at this moment, he said, well, I may not have fulfilled all my duty. Maybe still I should do much more than that, but I cannot do much more, more than that. Imam Hussein Salamullah said, yes. And to Amami, you are in front of me in paradise. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raja'oon. Wa sayalamu alladheena zalamu ala Muhammad ayyaman qalabin yanqalibun. Wa al-aqibatu lil-muttaqeen. Allahumma inna nasaluka wa nad'uuk bi jalali wujhika al-kareem wa bi Qur'anika al-azim wa bi Muhammad wa ahli baytihi al-tahirin wa bi al-Husayn al-wajih wa jaddihi wa abih wa ummi wa akhih wa al-tis'at al-ma'asumina min banih. أن تعجل فرج وليك صاحب العصر والزمان وأن تجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه ومن المجاهدين بين يديه اللهم اقض به حوائجنا 
واشف به مرضانا وارحم به موتانا واغفر به ذنوبنا واحرسنا به من شر الأشرار وكيد الفجار وطوارق الليل والنهار اللهم اكشف هذه الغمة عن هذه الأمة اللهم احرسنا واحرس شبابنا وبناتنا من شر الشيطان ومن شر السلطان ومن طوارق الزمان وإلى أرواح شيعة أمير المؤمنين ومن مات على الإيمان رحم الله من يقرأ الفاتحة قبلها صلوات